Good afternoon. Welcome to all of you today. Uh, this is our second Wednesday together in Lent. And the scene from the Passion today is the betrayal. Let's stand and we'll begin with our first hymn together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. We take refuge in your infinite mercy, seeking your grace for the sake of Christ. Have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Our Heavenly Father has indeed had mercy on us and given his one and only Son to be our Savior. I announce his grace to all of you. In the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. From Psalm 73. Truly, God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me... My feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For they have no pangs until death, their bodies are fat and sleek, 
They are not in trouble as others are. They are not stricken like the rest of mankind. Therefore, pride is their necklace. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes swell out through fatness. Their hearts overflow with follies. They scoff and speak with malice. Loftily, they threaten oppression. They set their mouths against the heavens, and their tongue struts through the earth. Therefore, his people turn back to them and find no fault in them. And they say, how can God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked, always at ease. They increase in riches. All in vain have I kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long I have been stricken and rebuked every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. But when I thought how to understand this, it seemed to me a wearisome task. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I discerned their end. The Old Testament reading for today's worship from 1 Chronicles chapter 12. And some of the men of Benjamin and Judah came to the stronghold to David. David went out to meet them and said to them, If you have come to me in friendship to help me, my heart will be joined to you. But if you betray me to my adversaries, although there is no wrong in my hands, then may the God of our fathers see and rebuke you. Then the spirit clothed Amasai, chief of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, O David, and with you, O son of Jesse, peace, peace to you, and peace to your helpers, for your God helps you. Then David received them and made them officers of his troops. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading from Acts chapter 7. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately while he was speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And from the small catechism today, what does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires, and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Anyone who's been around the church for a while, especially during the season of Lent, knows the name of Judas. When the disciples are listed in the Gospels, the twelve that Jesus chose to follow him, Judas is labeled the betrayer. He is called the Judas who betrayed Jesus. Imagine having that little footnote, follow your name, 
for the rest of history. Now, as we read the gospel lesson today, the chief priests are more than happy to make a deal with Judas. They have been looking for a way to arrest him by stealth because they intend to kill him. So, for just a little bit of money, for 30 pieces of silver, another gospel tells us, Judas has agreed to betray Jesus or hand Jesus over to them. And if you want to check it out later, there is actually an old Hank Williams song called 30 Pieces of Silver. So if you like that country music genre, make sure you check that out later on today. So the actual betrayal happens in the second part of the gospel reading today in the Garden of Gethsemane. And a whole crowd of people with clubs and swords have gathered, led by Judas to the place where Jesus is praying. And then Judas gives them the signal. He kisses Jesus and they seize him and they take him away to be tried by the chief priests and the Jewish council. So the scene from the Passion this week is the betrayal. And betrayal is really a part of all of our lives. It's something that we all do. For example, if somebody has let their grass grow too long in your neighborhood, and it's six or eight inches tall, or they've left some junk in the front yard or a car parked in the swale overnight, you will call the code office. You will betray them or hand their name over to the local officials who will make sure they clean up their property. Or maybe you've had the opportunity to call the police tip line. You know, the adage is, if you see something, say something. And police solve hundreds and hundreds of crimes every single year when people just like us call anonymously and give them a tip or tell them about somebody who has broken the law and needs to be brought to justice. You know, domestic violence demands that some professionals, like myself, report what we see. If we see bruises on somebody or we suspect violence, we must betray them and hand their names over to people who will investigate that, that task or what has happened then. Sometimes there's a person who's struggling with an addiction. And so the family and friends get together and they do an intervention. And they tell that person, we love you so much that we are going to make sure you get the help you need. But you know what? That person always feels like the people closest to them have betrayed them, even though that is the one thing that they need to nudge them to get the help that they need. And I think that there are still some schools that have an honor code. And the honor code says you must turn in somebody who's been cheating. You do not have a choice. You must betray that person who has broken the honor code. Now, those examples really don't sound too bad because we know there is a positive end to them. But most of the time when we speak of betrayal, it's not a good thing. Some of the synonyms we use for betrayal kind of let you know how we feel about it. Things like treachery, double-crossed, a violation of trust, a breach of faith. But my, my favorite one, and here's your word for the day, Ray, perfidy. If somebody is a betrayal, they are perfidious. I guess that's why we don't meet too many people named Judas. I've met people named Jude and Judah but never a Judas. In fact, if you check the lists of the most popular baby names anywhere, Judas isn't even on the list. That name is not even mentioned. Nobody has that name. But there are others in the Bible who are known for betrayal. One of them is Daniel. Daniel is one of the top advisors to the king of Babylon in exile. 
But the other presidents and satraps don't like Daniel. They are jealous of his popularity. They are jealous of his favor. So they decide that they are going to use Daniel's prayer life against him. And they convince the king of Babylon to declare a law that anybody who prays in the next 30 days to their God is fed to the lions. Now, Daniel knows the law. He knows the consequences, but he's always prayed three times a day, and so he keeps praying. And, of course, they're looking in the window, and they see Daniel, and they betray him to the king. Daniel's been praying. You know what you have to do, king. You have to throw him to the lions. Another person from the Old Testament that we relate to betrayal is Doeg the Edomite. Some of you smiled. You recognize the name, huh? Well, this goes back a long time when David isn't king of Israel yet, but he knows he's going to be. And King Saul is jealous of David because people love David. So... Saul is chasing David. David has a band of soldiers, and they're always on the run from Saul because Saul wants to get rid of him. Saul's ready to kill him. So one day, David comes to the house of Abimelech in the town of Nob, and he says, do you have any food so I can feed my soldiers? He says, well, all we have is the bread of the presence, bread that the priests put out, to remind people of the presence of God in their places of worship. David says, we'll take it. He eats the bread, he feeds his army, and it also so happens that the sword of Goliath is there. Remember, David defeated Goliath with one stone from his sling, but when Goliath fell, he took Goliath's sword and cut his head off with it. So David takes the sword of Goliath, and he and his soldiers leave, but there's somebody there who sees the whole episode. Doeg the Edomite, who is the chief of Saul's herdsmen. Later on, Saul is sitting with his officers and his servants, and he says, I can't believe you guys. You know where David's going to be. Somebody's got to tell me. And Doeg says, I know where he's been. He's been to Abimelech's house, and he's got the sword of Goliath. And Doeg betrays David. Unfortunately, when Saul goes back to the house, he kills a whole bunch of priests, and he's still got David on the run. David even wrote a song about it, Psalm 52, about his experience, about being betrayed by Doeg, the Edomite. And then there's Adam at the very beginning of the Bible. God's in the garden, discovers that Adam and Eve are hiding because they're naked and they're embarrassed. He says, what have you done? Did you eat from the tree that I forbid you to eat from? And the first thing Adam says is, she gave it to me. He's more than happy to throw his wife under the bus and betray her to God. So why does Judas do it? Why does G Judas betray Jesus? Maybe it was the money. We know from the other Gospels that Judas was the treasurer of the Twelve. And he would often help himself to the meager funds that the disciples had to support their ministry. So maybe it was the money. Maybe it was collusion kind of thinking into the future. You know, if something happens to Jesus, it would be good to have some friends in high places. Just in case. Maybe if he betrays Jesus, maybe if they get their hands on Jesus, Jesus will be forced to be the kind of Messiah that they want him to be. He'll have no choice but to use his power. He'll have no choice but to be the king that Israel has been waiting for. And in Luke and John's Gospels, they mention the fact that somehow Satan got into Judah. Somehow, Satan got into his mind and his thinking. And that's pretty scary stuff. But how do you feel when you've been betrayed? How do you feel when the neighbor called the city 
on you and your yard? How do you feel when you're the one who's the focus of an intervention? How do you feel when someone you thought you could trust has let you down? It wasn't that long ago that um, the older couple in our congregation, the, the husband died and the, the wife was left alone, but she wasn't ready to move out of her house yet. So the kids found a caregiver for her, somebody just to come in and do some shopping, do some cleaning, uh, do a little bit of laundry, prepare some meals, just do what she needed so she could stay in her home. And they did background checks. They called the references. They did all, everything you possibly could to make sure they found a reliable, trustworthy person. Seemed to do a very good job for a long time. But then when she died, the family got together and they were figuring out all the, all the loose ends you have to tie up after somebody dies. And they couldn't reconcile the bank account. And they checked, and they checked, and they checked, and finally they discovered that this caregiver they trusted so much had simply written checks to herself, but never entered them in the ledger. And they didn't find it until after, way after the fact, thousands and thousands of dollars. And they couldn't have felt more betrayed by somebody they really trusted. How do you feel? when someone is more than willing to point to you and say, he did it. What's really interesting is that this is all part of the plan. I mean, Jesus couldn't have been any clearer when he said, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests. Somebody he knows is going to turn him over to his enemies. And they will condemn him to death, and then deliver him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. Jesus says very clearly, the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. I wonder what he meant by that. You know, there's Job in the Old Testament who wished he had never been born when he suffered everything that he suffered. Maybe the thoughts, the regrets, the guilt of having done something like that, of having betrayed Jesus, would make you feel so bad that you wished that you had never been born. Well, there is some good news this morning. And that is that our Lord Jesus Christ is exactly the opposite of everything we've described. Rather than being somebody who betrays, Jesus is somebody who advocates for you. That's from 1 John chapter 2, where the disciple John that Jesus loved said, If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus steps in to take the blame for us rather than turning us in, the ones who deserve the blame. He's more than willing to stand up for us and take the punishment of God for our sins on the cross. Paul said that Jesus is also the one who intercedes for us when Others might condemn. Jesus Christ is the one who died. More than that, who was raised. Who was at the right hand of God. Who indeed is interceding for us. What is it that keeps us from being punished the way we deserve for our sins? Whether they're our thoughts, our words, or our actions. It's Jesus. Interceding. Standing up for. Standing in for us. And when you think of the betrayer and the betrayal, think of Jesus, who's described in the Old Testament this way. And this is from Psalm 57. 
where David says, be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For in you, my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge. Imagine that. Jesus knows what we've done. He knows who we are. Yet rather than turning us in, he hides us under his own loving care, under his mercy, under his sacrifice for us on the cross. When you think of betrayal and betrayers, always remember how different Jesus is from anyone or anything else. He is the one we can trust. He is the faithful one. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you in prayer, confident that we have an advocate with you, Jesus, confident that he intercedes for us and we receive your mercy, confident that you hear our prayers and you answer. Heavenly Father, thank you for helping us think today about betrayal and betrayers and who we trust and who's let us down and how faithful Jesus has always been for us. Heavenly Father, we know what it hurts to be let down. Never let us forget what it feels like to be lifted up. Never let us forget what it feels like to be in the shadow of your care, in the shadow of your love, in the shadow of your grace. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we ask your forgiveness for those times we haven't been trustworthy, when we haven't been there for others, when maybe we've pointed the finger rather than confessing our sins. Thank you for loving us all the same and being so faithful. Lord, today in Jesus' name, we continue to pray for the people in Texas who have, seem to have so many needs now, just help those communities to get back on their feet. And we pray for many receiving vaccines and waiting for vaccines. We pray for your good healing, Lord, for so many of your people and for a return to what we would think of as normal. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of those who care for us when we're sick and bring us your gift of healing. Lord, in Jesus' name, we, we pray for Steve and thank you that he's back home now. Continue to strengthen him. We ask your blessings on Beth, now home from the hospital. We uh, pray for Deb that you would guide her and lead her in the right direction now. Continue to bless Rod and Dave with your strength and healing. And Heavenly Father, as we come to your altar, we thank you for your gifts of grace that remind us of all that Jesus went through for us. Thank you for your forgiveness, life, and salvation to come to us in the very body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for being our rock. Thank you for being the one we can always trust. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
You may be seated.
May this, our Savior's true body and blood, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Go with his joy and peace. Amen. We stand for prayer. Lord, now you let your servants go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. We have seen your salvation and received your gifts of grace, forgiveness, life, and salvation in the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the light, Lord, in our lives and a light that shines in this world to give us hope. Thank you, Lord, for being the faithful one, the one we can always trust. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.